Welcome to Japan Politics Explained, where we review recent news and statistics regarding politics and elections in Japan. Today I'll be predicting who will become the next Prime Minister of Japan, by ranking top politicians in order of likelihood. I'll start with a brief explainer on why I'm making the video about the next Prime Minister. The terms of the current members of the House of Representatives, or the lower chamber of Japan's parliament, expires on October 21st. The Japanese Prime Minister has the authority to dissolve the House of Representatives and trigger an election at any time. And that means an election will be held sometime between now and early November, with the most likely scenario being that a snap election will be called soon after the end of the Tokyo Paralympic Games. Since Japan uses a parliamentary cabinet system, a parliament will vote for the next Prime Minister after the upcoming election. So the political terrain right now, in the lead up to the election, can be analyzed to see who is likely to become the next head of government. Without further ado, let's look at the lineup of politicians who I'll be ranking today. From the ruling Liberal Democratic Party, we have the incumbent, Yoshihide Suga. We also have Taro Kono, Shigeru Shiba, Shinjiro Koizumi, and former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. They're included in the list because a recent public opinion poll by Nikkei found that they were the top four politicians that respondents thought were suitable to become the next prime minister. On a side note, Suga, the incumbent, ended up fifth on the list. I'm also adding party policy chief Fumio Kishida, foreign minister Toshimitsu Motegi, chief cabinet secretary Katsunobu Kato, and former defense minister Tomomi Inada, who were considered so-called post-Abe candidates, or future party hopefuls back when Abe was in power. Next, we have all the leaders from the other political parties in parliament. I've excluded the small parties like Arashi no Tō and Reiwa Shinsengumi because their leaders are not members of parliament, which is a requirement for being a prime minister, and they're not expected to become one soon. Lastly, we have Yuriko Koike, the governor of Tokyo, the reason for which I'll explain later. Now let's begin. I'll categorize the candidates in these four tiers. Likely, maybe, no way, and zero chance. You may have realized that I have a lot of LDP members in the list for consideration, and that's because the LDP will almost definitely be the largest party coming out of the election. Despite Suga's plunging approval rate, even the most pessimistic predictions point to the LDP winning at least over half of the seats. Add to that the Komeito, which is the junior coalition partner, and you will have a majority backing whoever the LDP puts forward as a prime minister candidate. In almost all cases, the leader of the top party becomes the next prime minister, so the race for the prime minister's seat is right now mostly a race for the LDP leadership. And that means our first candidate, Suga, goes in the likely column. As the incumbent, he has the nationwide name recognition to be an effective face for the party, and he also has the authority as the prime minister to call a snap election any time, meaning that he will do so when it is most advantageous for him. That's great news for Suga because none of the other potential candidates for the LDP leadership have enough supporters or the momentum within the party to oust him. What's most likely to happen is that Suga will call out an election early so that he won't give his opponents in the LDP much time to build up the support and momentum. But suppose something happens that throws a wrench into that plan. Maybe the COVID-19 epidemic gets worse, and holding an election early is discouraged from a public health perspective. Maybe another scandal involving Suga and the Olympic Games surfaces sometime soon. In that case, the opportunity for other LDP members to aim for the prime minister seats goes up. Which brings us to Taro Kono, who goes in the maybe call. He has had plenty of media exposure recently as the minister in charge of the country's COVID vaccine rollout. So there is the name recognition there. He's also served in key ministerial roles in the past, such as defense minister and foreign minister. So he is a tested politician. He ranked first in a recent poll on who respondents would like to see as the next prime minister, so he has the popularity as well. In terms of intra-party politics, Kono is in the faction led by finance minister and former prime minister Taro Aso, which is the second largest faction in the LDP. If the Aso faction can unite and fully throw its weight behind Kono, he may be able to get the backing of other factions disgruntled with the influence that the faction led by LDP Secretary General Toshihiro Nikai has on Suga. 
factions or habatsu is a bit complicated, so I'll make a separate video on it at another time. Next up is Shigeru Ishiba, who I'll put in the No Way column. Yes, he is popular among the public, having tied with Kono on the opinion poll with the next prime minister, but at the same time, he cannot be said to be popular within his own party. Ishiba has challenged Suga and former Prime Minister Abe in the past in several LDP leadership races, making his faction the black sheep of the party. While he is making moves to win over other party members, it's unlikely he'll be able to reverse years of bad blood in the short time span until the next election. He's also lost several members from his own faction because of past losses at LDP presidential races, which means he may not even be able to make a bid for the presidential post. Shinjiro Koizumi also goes in the No Way column, due to his lack of experience in cabinet roles and a lack of organized support as he does not belong to a party faction. Although he does have significant name recognition as the good-looking son of a former prime minister, LDP members are probably hoping to use that to the party's advantage at a later time when Koizumi is more tried and tested. He does place above Ishiba, however, because the LDP might back him if the party becomes severely unpopular, under Suga and the party feels the need for a drastic makeover. Abe is a little tricky. Suga's struggles have led to many in the LDP and some in the public to look back on Abe's leadership fondly, so there is some support for Abe to bring back the good old days. However, the former prime minister has a lot of baggage, such as favoritism scandals that remain unresolved. Just a few days ago, it was decided that Abe will be reinvestigated by prosecutors for allegedly paying for his supporters' dinners at parties. Abe doesn't seem to have much of an incentive to run either, given that he knows firsthand the demanding nature of the job amid the COVID crisis, and given that his major goals, such as passing national security legislation, are already achieved. His one remaining goal, which is rewriting the constitution, won't get done anytime soon, so the prime minister's seat is not very appealing for him at the moment. Therefore, Abe goes behind Ishiba in the no way tier. Fumio Kishida. The party had big hopes for him before, but that no longer looks to be the case. As the head of the party in the LDP stronghold of Hiroshima Prefecture, his party's candidate lost a Hiroshima upper house seat to an opposition candidate in a special election this spring, which eroded party members' trust in Kishida's ability to win elections. He does have some clout as faction leader, and he also has the name recognition so he goes in front of Koizumi in the No Way column. Toshimitsu Motegi is experienced, having led Japan in trade negotiations with Trump's America, and he also is currently serving as Japan's top diplomat. As a member of the Takeshita faction, he has the intra-party backing to make a solid run for the LDP leadership. But he lags behind in public visibility and name recognition, so he's probably a good person for key ministerial roles, not necessarily the next prime minister. I'll put him in between Kishida and Koizumi. Katsunobu Kato is close to Abe and is a member of the Takeshita faction as well, so party members will be welcoming of Kato's bid for prime minister. His role as chief cabinet secretary under Suga, who previously held the position, is helping Kato overcome his lack of name recognition. However, the sort of media coverage that propelled Suga to the prime minister seat like the announcement of the new imperial era, Reiwa, is not there for Kato. So whether his recognition will rise enough to make him a leader is questionable. He's also been the subject of intense criticism, as the health minister at the start of the COVID outbreak. Let's put him a little above Motegi. Tomomi Inada goes behind Ishiba. She was once a party darling, but she's now fallen out of favor with the LDP's mainstream right wing for her support of LGBTQ protections and of dual surnames. Even her membership to the LDP's largest Hosoda faction cannot compensate for her decline. Now that all the LDP members are done, let's look at the other parties. Yukio Idano, leader of the Constitutional Democratic Party, has the biggest shot at claiming the prime minister's seat. In the rare but not impossible scenario that Suga's lack of popularity translates to an electoral victory for the opposition, Idano is the prime minister candidate of choice for the CDP, the biggest opposition party, and most likely the Japanese Communist Party as well, who threw their weight behind Idano the last time there was a vote for the next prime minister. 
he places behind Kono in the maybe column. With Adano sure to get the nod if the opposition wins, all the other opposition party heads go to the zero chance column. Natsu Yamaguchi of the Komeito, the junior coalition partner in the ruling bloc, also goes to the bottom tier. If the party remains in a coalition with the LDP, a candidate from the larger party will most likely be the prime minister candidate. If Komeito calls off a coalition, years of electoral animosity with the opposition parties will make it impossible for the smaller party to form a bloc big enough to take power. The so-called third force in parliament, Nippon Ishin, also finds its candidate in the No Way column. Although it is extremely popular in Osaka and the surrounding prefectures, that has not translated to popularity in other parts of Japan. This is evident in the fact that the party was able to get only one of its candidate elected in the recent Tokyo Metropolitan Assembly election. Ishin is closer to the LDP than it is to the main opposition parties, so if anything, Ishin will form a coalition with the LDP in exchange for a ministerial post than to lead a government ousting it. Last but not least, let's look at the wildcard candidate, Yuriko Koike. At first glance, she does not look like a credible PM candidate. She is the leader of a small regional party in Tokyo that became a minority party in the recent assembly election, and her past efforts to create a strong force in national politics failed miserably. But look further, and you'll see that she has a decent shot. That chance depends on whether she'll abandon her party for the LDP. Despite the cat and dog relationship between Suga and Koike, the governor has a pretty favorable relationship with the LDP in general. The LDP effectively backed her re-election bid in the 2020 Tokyo governor election, and Koike is ideologically aligned with much of the party. Not to mention that she was herself a member of the LDP until as recently as 2016. In the event that discontent towards Suga grows within the LDP, but no strong alternatives in the party appear from within it, Koike may be parachuted in to lead the party. She has good rapport with Nikai, one of the strongest forces in the inner workings of the LDP. Despite her party's recent loss at a Tokyo Assembly election, it is said that the party would have suffered even more had it not been for Koike's efforts on the campaign trail. Her leadership also has a strategic advantage. Koike has a high level of popularity among independents, so putting her at the helm would prevent the opposition from gaining the votes it desperately needs to topple the LDP. But does Koike want to run for the prime minister seat? Maybe. With the Tokyo Olympics and Paralympics set to be completed soon, she will have cleared a major goal as governor, and it's unclear what will keep her motivated in her remaining tenure as governor. She has shown desire for climbing up the ladder before, so if the conditions are perfect, she may just take the opportunity. It's a long shot, but Koike has a history of beating expectations and bringing significant change to the political environment. So that's why I'm putting her between Kono and Adano in the maybe column. So the final rankings are as shown. The predictions are based on what I know about Japanese politics, so I may be way off, especially with Koike, but I hope this helps you get an idea of who may become the next Prime Minister of Japan. Thank you so much for watching, and let me know in the comments what content you'd like to see in future videos.